Namaste friends, good day to all of you. We are exploring the different definitions of yoga and of course last time we talked about Acharya Ramanuja's definitions of yoga. Today I would like to share with you three definitions of yoga that come from our Vedic tradition. The sources are unknown because they are counted in different texts saying it has been said that yoga is this, it has been said that yoga is this. So obviously it has been quoted somewhere but we don't know exactly what the origin of these quotes are. So let us look at these three definitions of yoga found in some of these references. The first definition of yoga here is Mano Nigraha Yoga. Manas here means the mind. Nigraha means to discipline, to hold it steady. <coughs> Grahana means to grasp. Nigraha means to continuously grasp. See, the mind has the tendency to keep moving like a monkey. That's why mind is often compared to a monkey because a monkey jumps from one tree to another. Same way, mind jumps from one focus to another, one object to another, very easily distracted. <coughs> Nigraha to discipline eternally Nitaram Grahanam. That is yoga. To eternally discipline the mind so that it is focused on one direction, not many. That is yoga. A classic example of this is Hanuman. Hanuman is a monkey. No, monkeys are normally jumping from one place to the other. But not Hanuman. Hanuman was that great monkey whose focus was only Rama and nothing else, nobody else. Even though Hanuman was very capable, Hanuman was not an incapable monkey, Hanuman was a very capable monkey. But yet he chose to put his focus on Rama. That is what is called Mano Nikraha. His mind was eternally housed at the feet of Rama. That is yoga. So this is one of the definitions of yoga. Mano Nigraha Yoga. The second quote I have for you is Yoga Atma Jnana Jignyasa. There are many kinds of knowledge that is called Jnana. Mathematics is a field of knowledge, music is a field of knowledge, dance is a field of knowledge, etc. But Vedic tradition says among the higher knowledges, one of them is called the Atma Jnana, the knowledge of the self, the self-realization. What is the self? What is the Dharma of the self? And how to achieve that Dharma? That is called Atma Jnana. Jinyasa means an inquiry, a scientific inquiry, so to speak, a systematic inquiry. So, Atma Jnana Jignyasaha Yoga. So, Yoga is the inquiry into the nature of self, into the Dharma of the self, and into how to express the Dharma of the self, how to fulfill it. That is called Yoga. This is the second definition of Yoga from these books. The third definition of yoga is prana apana samyogaha yoga. This has also been shared with the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. Prana apana samyogaha yoga. Intimate relationship between prana and apana. The dualities of life. Sun and the moon, masculine and feminine heat and cold, etc. There are, the world is known through many different kinds of dualities. These many different kinds of dualities exist, but they have to exist in a harmonious relationship that is yoga. Sometimes one will be dominant, sometimes the other will be dominant, so there needs to be a harmony. A harmony does not mean 50-50. A 
harmony does not mean 50-50. When inhale is happening, exhale gives space. When exhale is happening, inhale gives space. This is balance. It's not that you are 50% inhaling, 50% exhaling. You are 100% inhaling, 100% exhaling. So this is what is called the harmony. So prana apana samyoga means you are somehow finding a harmony among the dualities of life. This, my dear friends, is an important reminder for us that yoga accepts dualities. There are many modern day people who propagate the view that yoga is an Advaita, non-dualistic approach. They are doing it out of great ignorance without fully understanding the philosophy of yoga as well as even the very word, the meaning of the word yoga which is a mean, which means there is a requirement for two things at least. So prana apana samyoga, yoga gives us this clarification that dualities in life are there, we cannot avoid them. We have to find harmony between these dualities and perhaps transcend them, which means not be affected by them. That is So these are the three definitions of yoga from some anonymous sources but are quoted in many commentaries. Namaste. Namaste, my dear friends. My name is Kaustub Desikachar, and I'm the current lineage holder of the Vinayoga tradition. Thank you for watching our YouTube video today. And if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscription button nearby below, and also the bell icon so that you are notified on our up-to-date uh, uploads of our video. We happily upload each week at least one video and discuss fantastic topics about the traditional aspects of yoga so we can keep the learning as pure and as close to the source as possible. So join our community and let us spread this fantastic knowledge of yoga. And if you like our videos, please leave a comment about what you think. And if you don't like our videos, please also let us know how we can improve. Namaste, dear friends.